time to start verifying this ether channel that we built in the last video and I got to I got to be blunt here especially for uh, longtime listeners it does feel like I violated my own prime directive because I'm always saying you know trust but verify and we put the ports in the ether channel and we didn't do any show commands to show you that the ports were actually in there I did want to reinforce some things we had just said in the previous video about the port costs and the impact of ports disappearing and also, as you are about to see, Ether channel commands are really long-winded, the show commands are. But at least we finally get to type the word Ether channel, because we're going to start with show Ether channel. And then look at some options here. We can put in our group number, and we also have a detail, we've got port, we've got protocol and summary there. One line summary per channel group sounds pretty good. We might come back to that one, but I want to visit some of these group number specific commands, which are going to look remarkably like the general commands. So that first batch is great to run if you have multiple ether channels running on a switch and you want to do some comparison, that kind of thing. But if you have multiple ether channels and you really just want the info about one of them, I like to put in show ether channel and then just go with the group number and then follow it with one of these five options. So let's go ahead and start with summary. And we got a lot going on here, but what exactly do we have going on here? Well, if this is the first time you've ever seen this command, you could still come up and say, okay, I can see what's going on because we've got a flag table at the very top and we look like we have some flags on the bottom of the output under port channel and ports. So it's a good time for me to remind you that for everyone, there's a first time in seeing a particular command. Don't let it panic you. Don't let it throw you. Just take a look around, whether it's a debug or a show command, and just see what you can see. And here we see a bunch of flags up there. We have 14 different flags. And a couple of these you have to watch because they mean one thing in uppercase and another thing in lowercase. If you'll note that the lowercase s stands for suspended, but the uppercase s stands for layer 2. And we have the letter U in there as well, uppercase U for in use, lowercase for unsuitable for bundling, which does not sound good. So we're kind of glad we don't see any of those. But you got to watch those cases because you don't want to look at SU down here and say, oh, okay, I've got an unsuitable for bundling port somewhere. You don't want to do that. So we've got two, one channel group in use, and it is channel group number two. And going from left to right, it's going to tell you first your port channel. And we have uppercase S and U here. And we just mentioned what those stand for, layer two and in use. And if you must be thinking, if there's a layer two ether channel, there must be a layer three ether channel. And there is, and also another huge clue is the fact we have layer three right here, which I'm sure you already noticed. Thing is, I want you to know that layer three ether channels exist. They are not part of the CCNA curriculum and we have to stop somewhere, so we're not gonna go into those in this course. But those are ether channels that you can actually assign an IP address to and use in routing. They do come in handy on occasion, but we're sticking with layer two ether channels here. Also on your exam and generally speaking, really when someone says ether channel, they mean a layer two ether channel because L2 ether channels were around long before the L3s ever came along. So if you if someone is referring to a, a layer three ether channel, they're, they're going to say that full thing, layer three ether channel or L3. But if you just hear ether channel again, they're talking about layer two. So let's look under protocol here, and how can we have no protocol? Well, we have no protocol here because we didn't use either of the negotiation protocols, LACP or PAGP. We used the on option, and certainly nothing wrong with that. You're gonna see it quite often, probably on your exam if they ask about ether channels, and you'll definitely see it quite often in the real world. So nothing unusual about seeing a dash here showing you that you did not choose one of those protocols. Now under ports, we have the letter P next to all four of them. And you can see that stands for bundled in port channel. This is exactly what we want to see. This is precisely and exactly what we want to see. We want to see the port channel, layer two, and in use. And we want to see a P next to every one of the ports that is bundled. But, you know, I like to show you things uh, or show commands when things aren't working as they should. So let's go ahead once again and shut down port 1 here on switch 2. And then we'll run show ether channel 2 summary again and see what we see. Let's try shut instead of sub. That will probably work better. Move that just a tad. Thank you. 
And we see the line protocol go down and we'll run show ether channel two summary. And notice that port one still appears here because as far as the switch is concerned, the port is still in the channel group. We didn't take it out. But this is the kind of thing you gotta watch out for when maybe you're not getting the throughput that you think you should be getting. And that's that we have the letter D next to fast ethernet one and D stands for down. Now, and you gotta watch your case there too because uppercase D is for down and lowercase D uh, is for default port. So again, here we see some D or AD port and some P ports mixed up. And just don't let your eyes play tricks on you. Look at that and say, okay, all four of them are in P uh, because they're not. So let's go ahead and put fast 01 back up. If you giggled during that, it's okay. <laughs> so let's try, let's run show spanning VLAN one one more time. Talking to someone here, but to you too. And you see everything's right back up. So again, as long as you don't take the channel group command off, any port that has a problem, once you resolve it, it should rejoin the ether channel with absolutely no problems at all. Let's take a look at another option here with show ether channel two. And this time we're gonna run port channel. And I like this one because you know occasionally in this business we have to do some detective work. Because uh, I, I hope you're sitting down for me to break this to you. And if you're not, you might want to sit down. But sometimes people don't tell the truth. And sometimes they do it because they're just doing it accidentally. Sometimes they're doing it to cover their own butts. But, you know, we, we've been there in networking. Well, no, that, uh, that trunk has been up for three years. You know, when you run a command, it's been up for an hour and a half. You know, or did you mess with this? No. And then you look at it and it's like, hey, well, somebody bundled and unbundled ports. And that's exactly what just happened here. Because at the top of this output, we have age of the port channel right now is 25 minutes, 34 seconds, going back to the recording of the last video. And it's even going to tell you how many ports you've got in it. That's nice to know. Port state equals port channel aggregate in use. We like that. And again, there's no protocol involved, anything like that. Ports in the port channel. It's even going to tell you what four ports you have on. What's the ether channel state? And this is what I really like when you're troubleshooting. It's going to tell you not only how long it's been since the last port was bundled, how long it's been since the last port was unbundled. It's even going to tell you which interfaces it was. And that really comes in handy, especially for some more advanced ether channel troubleshooting. So as you move on in your studies and in your career, don't forget this command because it's extraordinarily helpful with ether channels. Again, it's show ether channel, then the group number, and then port channel. Well, let's take a look at the protocol option. Well, that was simple. <laughs> not a whole lot for me to uh, show you here. I'm not exactly going to say, well, we're saving some of this for future studies uh, because we're not. The protocol, the mode is on, and that is just it. Now, we will go with detail here and a little word of warning. Whenever you use detail in a Cisco command, you usually get a lot more information than you actually need. Um, but sometimes they're, they're pretty handy. But this one's pretty good. Show Ether Channel 2 Detail. And starting at the top of that output, it's going to tell you the group state, which is layer 2, how many ports are in it, and what the number of maximum ports is. Then it's going to tell you how many port channels you have and the protocol. And minimum links will save that for another day. But ports in the group. We don't need to know every single field here, like the GC change and the load and the GC, that kind of thing. It's not what we need right now. But a couple of these fields you do want to pay attention to, and that is port state in particular, up, master, and bundle. Uh, and we really like that. It's exactly one that we want to see is in bundle. Tells you what channel group it's in, tells you what port channel it's in. And really that's about it. And also how long this particular port has been in its current state. That's helpful as well, because the last command, it showed how long it had been since a port had been bundled or unbundled, but it didn't show you the time for each port. And this command does just that. You'll always see it at the bottom of the output. So I can look at this clearly and say, okay, you know, here's one, two, and three up at the top. One uh, was obviously just changed because we got two minutes, 15 seconds. Then all of a sudden we have almost 30 minutes for ports two and three and then port four is about 20 minutes so you can tell what happened there two and three were in the group four was added a little while later and then what we can tell from that output of age in the port in the current state on port one is that it was just put back in a few minutes ago so that's going to show you the port channels in the group at the bottom 
And this information should look familiar. Age of the port channel at the top, time since the last port bundled and unbundled at the bottom, and that is good stuff to know. So just one more here before we move on at show ether channel. And we're just gonna go with detail here and not put port group. And again, this is a good command if you want all the information you can possibly get about all the ether channels the switch is running, but as you can see, the information is really the same as you're going to get with show ether channel group number detail. It's just that that particular command will filter some of it out for you. So now you see why I saved the verification commands. <laughs> yes, we've been uh, we've been verifying for about 10 and a half minutes here, and that's a lot of verification. But again, good commands to know, especially for those dreaded future studies when you start working with layer three ether channels and when you start working with some more of these details that ether channels can go into. But a lot of places just use a simple old ether channel. You just put channel group X, choose your mode, and you're ready to go. Speaking of choosing modes, we're gonna take a look at PAGP and LACP, those two negotiation protocols. We'll discuss those and see them in action on the very next video.